Welcome guys to an episode with the Doomed Hell. Today we're going to be talking about a very specific topic uh, that I haven't really talked about on my channel. So, uh, I remember when I was younger, uh, we were talking about the... Uh, let me just... We were talking about the Xbox One uh, coming out. This is when I was around in middle school and I was aware of the xbox 360 at the time i was gaming on an xbox original which isn't in this list but uh basically uh i was playing with my xbox 360 and lo and behold they released the xbox one and the ps4 and i was very i was extremely excited for the ps4 as i didn't see the xbox one as being worth it uh at the time the xbox one was considered one of the biggest consoles uh, ever produced although if we look here at how big it is compared to the ps3 the original fat ps3 it was quite a bit larger and uh i was not happy with the price point it was around 500 let me just write it down here 500 in and so dollars in canadian and I was really not happy with this price point. Um, at the time, I was, I had just bought a Xbox 360 about two years before that, uh, for around three hundred dollars. And it came with a Kinect as well, but uh, at the time we didn't really care about the Kinect. The I actually had a a slim edition, if I remember correctly, uh, but. I remember at the time you could buy an Xbox 60 for around $250 and the Xbox One was twice that uh, versus the PS4 which was around $450 which is a little more reasonable for most of us um, and it boasted around this it boasted actually a better performance than the Xbox One which is a plus factor uh, now we are in 2020 uh, coming into 2021 and the PS5 is finally the largest console that they have ever built um it's not only just large in terms of height or in terms of all dimensions um but it's also one of the weirdest consoles that they could have ever built in terms of how you're supposed to put it on the ground uh this console is also extremely easy to take off the t uh, the sides panels and it is a 600 dollared a uh, six hundred and thirty dollared console, which uh, may I remind you, the only ever t the only time they've ever had a console this expensive was with the original PS3, which was around six hundred and fifty dollars uh, Canadian or even less. So this is the this is the biggest console they've ever built. This is one of the most expensive consoles they've ever built. Uh, the Xbox Series X here is six hundred dollars. So no, it. It's not like it's less than the P uh, than the Xbox Series X. They've actually gone they've gone up in prices in terms of consoles, but the Series X has gone down over the PS5. Uh, the Series S is also cheaper than the the PS5 Digital, which is another disc for another discussion. Uh, now you might say that maybe well, if it's more in price, then maybe it's more in. Uh, performance and the fact is that is not true uh, the price of the ps4 being 630 canadian plus tax uh, has an 8 core ryzen 3.5 gigahertz uh, the xbox series x counterpart is closer to 3.8 gigahertz um, and we can have a discussion about that um, if i remember correctly it was uh, digital foundry which talked about it uh, it has an RDNA 2 architecture, uh, 2300 uh, stream processors, which has reportedly been as powerful as the RX 5700 or 5700 XT's closest, uh, which we can expect being around the RX 6600 XT, I want to say, uh, or even 6700. I'm not quite sure. Um, we'll have to see, but I'm pretty sure it's a little... Uh, it's a little lower in terms of the performance that we're getting today uh, in the, 
in the graphics card market department. So it's a little more powerful. It's it's around mid range, or actually high. Uh, I would say high end sort of uh, from last generation, but n uh, this generation, which just came out, uh, it's around the uh, mid range to lower end. Um, uh, no, not more lower end, just mid range. I would say like a little lower than that. Uh, and it boasts 1600, uh, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 at uh, around 448 uh, gigabytes per second. Though that is the performance of the PS5, and in all categories, the Xbox One is more powerful. All of these categories, okay. Uh, the only category with the PS5 is slightly better, is in terms of uh, uh, memory bandwidth for its SSD. However, the Xbox Series X also boasts a larger capacity SSD, which means that you're only getting a very slight advantage in a very isolated category with your PS5. Everything else is on the Series X, okay? So, what the fuck is wrong with this console? Why the fuck are people buying these? Why aren't people buying the Series X? And more importantly, why are people buying the PS5 over, let's say, a computer? And that is where our next arm argument comes into. I'm going to make a video talking about a barn find PC, which is, I, uh, which is probably only in terms of price to performance more powerful than the PS5. And yes, it will have a Blu-ray disc included. Okay? That's what we're talking about today. Um so this so this com this new computer which I have to build needs to have uh needs to perform a couple of things. The first thing is it needs to have approximately the Cinebench score of a Ryzen 2700X. Okay, if it has a Cinebench score close to the 2700X, I'm going to call that a win. Uh, it must have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 or 4. Um, if it is three, then I'm going to go for around 2000 megahertz. Uh, and if it is four, then it must be around, uh, 3400 megahertz is, is probably the closest I'll get to. Next up, it must have, uh, in terms of graphics cards, it must have at least uh, RX 5600 XT performance okay and uh, there's no really there's not really no VRAM uh, requirement I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get more VRAM than that uh, and finally it has to have a one terabyte uh, hard drive that is relatively fast If it can do any of these things or all of these things, then I'm going to be extremely happy. All right. And the reason why I have and the other thing is it has to be absolutely has to be cheaper than 630 Canadian plus tax. OK, so 630 uh, times 1.13. If my memory serves right is around six hundred and fifty dollars. Let's just check real quick. Thirteen. Oh, it's actually seven hundred and ten dollars. So guess what, guys? We have a large budget. This is a larger bu budget than my own fucking computer. All right. Let's call that seven hundred and ten dollars. Okay. This is the highest budget I've ever seen for a, uh, you know, a a relatively mid-range computer. Okay. Um. Now, Blu-ray discs. Uh, let's start with the Blu-ray disc. So, regular Blu-ray drives are pretty expensive. Uh, I'm going to give it to them. 
if they do have a good blu-ray drive it might be worth buying um but the fact is the fact of the matter is most blu-ray drives are not 100 percent perfect uh they have a lot of issues in terms of rendering the image uh asked and uh i'm sure that we can probably get a a blu-ray drive for a little cheaper and potentially have some of the blu-ray cap capabilities which the ps5 has so i'm i ha actually have a blu-ray drive um let's write it here actually my blu-ray drive cost me 30 bucks all right that is that's is full disclosure um i bought it off of a guy who didn't want his and uh he never needed it and so I, I just quickly bought it for 30 bucks uh now cinebench score time if we go here we are checking cinebench r15 i don't i don't really like cinebench r20 just yet um uh, we can always check it later if you if you guys want it uh let's see here amd fanboys no here you go so the ryzen 7 2700x uh at 4.2 gigahertz should get this ln2 5.7 oh that's pretty good so 1800 1800 score um maybe a little less something's wrong uh i think that was it for the scores so 1800 score is the overclockers score and if we look at the regular score real quick gonna be right here we're talking about oh hey drop it's lower than all right that's cool so it's actually lower than a 20 a skylake part 14 core which is not surprising but uh, i assumed a little more than that 9900x is here 10 core part which is beaten by the 3700x that's what i expected but i mean it's a 2700x i should give it some credit so at four point at four i'm gonna assume it's a 4.2 gigahertz all core maybe it's less than that it's performing around the 6950x uh stock uh, the 6950x is definitely a little um you know, down clocked for what it's capable of. Um, but I'll show you exactly <laughs> why we're talking about it right now. Threadripper 1900X is only scoring a little lower. And that just shows that first generation uh, versus second generation Ryzen is not much of a difference. Uh, and a th and 3700, uh, 3600 is scoring around an eight core first gen. That's pretty much the performance we're seeing per Ryzen. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, and then we have, you know, laptop. So what I'm thinking of getting, uh, we can't get that many cores. We can't get like a 10 core because 10 cores are just gonna, you know, get wrecked and they're not necessarily that good. What I'm thinking of getting is probably a 8-core or 10... Uh, I guess I'm going to have to go with the 10-core. I mean, there's not much else. Um, I wonder what a 9700K gets. 1500? Oh, that's bad. 
and that's just because hyper like Cinebench really likes hyper threading. In, in terms of gaming, this is going to perform better than a twenty seven hundred X. That's for sure. Um, so we're going to go with the sixty nine fifty X potentially. So if we go on eBay. <laughs> Yes, I'm using uh, Canadian prices because I'm Canadian and, um, I mean, you're probably going to have similar prices. Just, you know, use a converter and you'll be fine. So, we can either get a Ryzen 1700. And no, not the 1900. Uh, the reason why I'm not getting a 1900 is the 1900 is, uh, the TR4 platform is still extremely expensive for motherboards. So that's two hundred dollars. That's uh, it's not great. Hundred forty. Uh, two thirty. Or we can get a i seven, ninety seven hundred K. Excuse me. Which is a little more expensive. That's kind of shitty. Uh, or we could get... Hmm. We could get an i7 5960X. 8 core, but at least it's hyper-threaded. Which is a lot, like, a lot cheaper. And overclocked slightly better. Uh, than a Ryzen 1700. Or we could get the big boy 6950X. And you'll notice I'm not going for any of the... Oh my god, they've gotten so cheap. And yet that is still not cheap enough for our budget today. We could go with a Xeon E5-1680 V2. Which, by the way, I'm not going with any Xeons because we need to overclock, and I know Xeons are not just not gonna, they're just not gonna cut it. Ha <laughs> ha! This is really good. This is excellent. Uh, they're actually really, really cheap right now. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So, I'm gonna write right here. Remember, there is no tax for a lot of these products, alright? There's shipping. But that's about it. There's no tax. Just so you guys know. So we're going with a Xeon E5 1680V2. Okay. Which is, if you remember correctly, that is a Ivy Bridge. Uh, high bin. And, it over and it's uh, 8 cores. Alright. That is an excellent find. Um, I'm very surprised that we found this. Um, and I'm going to write the price in a sec. I guess I'm going to have to cut all this, but you get my point. It's a good, it's a good find. It's an eight core find. It's, it's very decent. Um, they're going for around 200 if you're lucky. Uh, we're gonna put it down. Yeah, two hundred. That's that seems to be the deal. All right, two hundred. It's a little more than that, isn't it? Wait, is it? Because of shipping. Oh yeah, it's like. Let's say two twenty. Okay. So that's our CPU. Next is the RAM. Uh, guess how cheap DDR three is. And it's a very good thing that we found DDR three because we can. Do some pretty crazy shit with DDR3. We are going to give it some 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, four times eight for 70 bucks. Can we get something cheaper? <coughs> 12 bucks? No, it's not 12, is it? 40 bucks. No, we're not getting this. Too expensive.
I honestly don't care as long as we're getting more than eight gigabytes. Oh, this is garbage RAM. What the fuck? My RAM was cheaper than that. <laughs> All right. Well, if if he's not happy, we're gonna go on Kijiji. And I'm checking in the GTA air. Oh fuck. 